Welcome to a special edition of the Point of Order podcast. I am Assemblyman Josh Hoover, and uh, I am joined today, very excited to be joined by Alex Vassar, uh, who manages the State Library's Communications Office. Uh, Alex, uh, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, really excited to have you on. Uh, you know, most this podcast throughout the legislative session, you know, has been kind of a week to week banter about what's going on in California. Uh, politics, but this, this one, week this one's going to be way more fun, right? Because we get to talk about some cool stuff. Yeah, so. I always think it's. I, I always feel like it's you know safer to talk about older stuff, and so that, that really works out well. It's like no, these are these. You know, we can talk about people that are not here anymore. Yeah, uh, yeah. long gone folks. And, exactly. And it's just, it's a. Uh, it's less emotionally invested. Exactly. Topic. Yeah. So we're going to dive in today to some some history of California as well as. Uh, the work that Alex is doing at the State Library. But Alex, tell us a little bit about your background to get sure. us started off. Uh, I started uh, in public policy in uh, as a, a legislative aide, a uh, council assistant for a member of the San Jose City Council. Uh, did that for a few years and then uh, was selected to participate in the Senate Fellows Program in 2007, 2008. Uh, really enjoyed my time. Uh, you get to be placed in legislative office for a full year and that really it lets you see the whole cycle of things. And so there, there is some stuff you miss if you're just here for yeah. one year. But when you kind of see things happen over time, it, it really shows you how the personalities, like individual personalities, impact uh, what happens in the legislature. Um, after that, I uh, worked for the legislature for a few more years, uh, was a governor's appointee over at the Board of Equalization, um, came back to the assembly, was a chief of staff for about 30 seconds, and then <laughs> um, and then ended up uh, going back to the Board of Equalization, and then I've been at the library for about six and a half years. That's awesome. So I, I, I didn't realize it had been that long, six and a half years. Six and a half that's, years at the library, yeah. 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 That's really cool. And, and you know, I'm, I'm glad, I love that you mentioned the fellowship program, uh, because this is something that, I mean, I'm always trying to talk about sure. and, and get students, you know, out of college to uh, apply for, because... Uh, we really it's it's a really great program if you're interested Absolutely. in California uh, or public policy specifically, right? Yeah. Um, or working in the state capitol. Tell us a little more about the fellowship. So yeah, so it's it's a one year program, and uh, fellows come in. There there are four different programs. Uh, one for the judiciary, where where fellows are placed with a uh, county superior court somewhere in the state. Uh, there's the executive fellows, where they're placed with a with an executive branch department or agency, uh, generally in Sacramento. And then uh, the the most closely uh, confined are the uh, Senate fellows and the Assembly fellows. They all work in one building together, and yep. and I, I think that's a really cool. Opportunity because you're coming in as a, as a brand new staffer in the in the Capitol, but you have 17 BFFs on other floors. Yeah. Like you, you yeah. if 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 things do get weird in your office, uh, you don't understand something. You can you have you have somebody you can go to one door down, two doors down, and and just talk with. Totally, it's it's, yeah. it's a really it's a safe way. I think it's a great way to it. enter Absolutely. the building and enter the policy process. Uh, if you know, and I, just because it's. It, I mean, there's a lot of people that want to help you, right? There's a lot of yeah, people absolutely. that want to, you know, kind of guide you along in that first year. It's a, it's a long time program. I, th yeah. I think it started in the the late fifties, and wow, that's um, it's it's had a, a really really significant impact on on the institution. And so um, I always encourage people, hey, check it out. It might not check be for you, but yeah. it's. It's worth looking into. Definitely worth looking into. And it's paid, which doesn't it, hurt, right? Yeah, sorry, I didn't mention that. But yeah, it's, it's paid, and uh, the pay went up just a couple of years ago. And so it's, yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a really good thing to be doing. Yeah, it's, uh, we were really fortunate to, uh, to get an, a, an assembly fellow this yeah. year for the first time in my office. Uh, she actually just started this week. And uh, so very excited about that. But it's, it's such an interesting process, right? Because... Um, it's very competitive, right, to actually get into the program. You have to apply, go through a pretty lengthy application process, Absolutely. meet with a panel, right, right. Uh, really earn your way into the program. But once you're in, you know, you are, in our case, in our caucus, there's four fellows for 14 offices. Right. And so the offices are almost also being interviewed. Absolutely, <laughs> right? yeah. And, and so. it's, it's, it is interesting because I think some offices, and I, I, I did speak with the fellows yeah. uh, this year before their uh, okay. interviews and then also – uh, after I think with the Senate fellows after they did their interviews, and and they they absolutely said like some offices are are selling like they're hey you should come to our office because of this. <laughs> and then and then some are are like 
treating it as a job interview, like grilling yeah. them. And it's yeah. like, oh, which which appeals to you? This is, that's uh, a good question. Yeah. And so yeah, it's it's uh, it's it's interesting. Different different offices have different approaches, yeah. and different yeah. fellows have different approaches. It is funny though. I always tell the fellows, it's like the one time in your life where you'll get to pick absolutely your employer versus. <laughs> Yeah, that's you know, not a common thing. Just hoping to get a job somewhere, right? So it's, uh, yeah, it's 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 pretty great. But definitely encourage anyone. So you have to have a bachelor's degree. You have to have a bachelor's degree. Um, I think you have to be 21, maybe 22. Okay. So, yeah. So if you're basically coming out of college. But there's no age limit on the on the older end. On the older end, right? no. Like I, I was had yeah, we, fellows from all different. Absolutely. In my class, yeah. we had fellows up, up into their 40s. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and that actually used to be a, a more of a trend. Uh, yeah, more common. I, I think back right. in the... 90s, uh, early 2000s, you had folks that were mid-career wow. uh, who would come just back and do that. Making, and, yeah. and it's just, yeah, it's... it's um, Very interesting. Different different folks with different experiences can contribute, and that yeah. includes both where, where you're from, your life, and also just where you are in your life. So Yeah, yeah. we'll definitely check it out if that if you're in that stage of life or if you have a, a kid or a grandkid that's yeah. in that stage of life, you can let them know, but you can just Google the Capital Fellowship Program, and it's... Uh, You'll find lots of information out there. Yep. That's that's awesome. Thanks for sharing your experience Absolutely. there. Um, let's talk a little bit more about um, you know your role at the State Library. Sure. So tell us a little bit about what you do at the State Library, uh, why you find it interesting, and and kind of yeah why you enjoy it. It's um, I, I always I always acknowledge you know this might not appeal to everybody. Uh, we we have four million books, uh, <laughs> probably uh, tens of thousands of maps. Yeah. Um, and, and hundreds of thousands of photographs. I mean, like literally That's hundreds amazing. of thousands, yeah. might be 500,000, 600,000. And, and a lot of these are photographs nobody's seen before. Like yeah. they're, they're in the collection and we, we know they're there, but not people aren't looking at these on a regular basis. And so just this opportunity to be there and to experience the library is, is a really, really cool That's spot. Cool. I, I, I love being there. There's, there's so much. California has such great history. And, and it's just, it's a, as someone who loves that, to be able to be at the State Library, experience it, and then also share that with visitors. Um, we, we do tours. And, um, do you we, get a lot of visitors? You, the pandemic hit that. Um, yeah, you know, that yeah. wasn't the number one thing we were doing. But uh, yeah. we, we have tours. We have, uh, we have podcasts. or not podcasts. We do videos, uh, author yeah. talks, nice. and um, we, things like that. And so it's, it's, we try to engage with people and, and let them know about the resources that are out there, uh, both electronic and, and print. And it's, it's a cool place. I mean, it's like Mark Twain's journal. There, there's so much stuff That's at the library. Yeah. Um, yeah. What are some of your favorite things that you, uh, that you have over there? Um, so I think... Probably my favorite item in the collection is, uh, and and it's just you know it's 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 me uh, is I really like the state legislature and yeah. the history of the state legislature. And during the first session of the legislature, which was uh, started eighteen forty nine, actually it was December. It's this this time of year, um, we, December eighteen forty nine into eighteen fifty, the legislature met. And towards the end of the session, uh, there was an assembly member named Bradford. And uh, I think it was John Bradford, but not okay. 100 percent sure. And and he actually walked around the Senate and Assembly chambers and asked his his fellow members to sign their names and then write a short biography. And wow. he took that and he bound it as a book, and it ended up in our collection. And so it's it's the That's it, it's the, the lives of the legislators, and it's it's from an era that we don't know a lot about these folks. Like there's very little right. information. There, there wasn't like the internet. There's not. <laughs> you know? and, and so it's like who, like there there are some <clears throat> legislators from that era. It's like we don't know when they were born. We don't know when they died. They just came in and then yeah disappeared. Well, I remember asking you uh, when I got elected uh, a year about a year ago. Yeah. Who else had been from like my area? Right. Uh, Folsom, the city of Folsom, and it, it's not. To- the easiest question to answer, right? It, and we, we do know some of them. Yeah. Uh, and I think we could take a really good guess. Absolutely. The, the old lists were, um, you know, they would record the, the name, which was usually yeah. the last name, uh, yeah. you know, Jay Hoover. Uh, you'd have the session that they served in, right. uh, their party affiliation, and then their county. And that and was it. That's it. <laughs> and Or, or the, actually the county is represented. So if you have part of another county, you don't so, actually know which one the person was from. So you would almost need to go to the city and, and see and if so, they yeah, have history. It was really, right? it was like, really yeah. complicated. So just kind of building up that history yeah, and trying really, to be able to answer questions like those is yeah, no, pretty it's rewarding. Yeah. I think what we figured out is it's been about 112 years yep. since we had a that's, representative from Folsom. That's a while. That's which a is a long, long time. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, pretty, pretty exciting. But um, do you feel like... Um, the role of the library has changed since, you know, in the last few years? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I think one of the, the largest things, the legislature has been, uh, 
we say charging, you know, they, they, they have been yeah. uh, assigning <clears throat> new tasks to okay. the state library, uh, which are not, not far off from what we had been doing, but do take us in different directions. Yeah. Uh, one example is we've got the Dolly Parton Imagination Library, oh. um, and, and that is a program that will send one free book to each kid under the age of five in the state every month. Um, because wow. early literacy is so important Absolutely. and, and, you know, things are expensive these days. And so, yeah. um, it's just a program that helps kids get access to their own personal library. That That's pretty cool. I, I thought it was cool. I, I didn't, I yeah. never even heard about that. It was, oh, is, it was, uh, it, it started, uh, last year. It was, uh, Tony okay. Atkins and Shannon Grove. Very uh, interesting. they were both, you'd be shocked to hear this, both really big fans of, uh, Dolly Parton. Um, <laughs> and, and they just, they came together on that. Uh, and it, it came through as part of the budget last year. That is um, really interesting. Okay. And then the other big thing that was, that was a big change was we have a grants portal. So the, there, okay. there are all these state departments and agencies that right. offer grants. Yes. Folks can apply, nonprofits can apply. Some, you know, some are for <clears throat> yeah. companies, some for nonprofits, some for individuals. And you have to go to all of these different state departments to mm-hmm. look that up. Um, a, f- a few years ago, I think it was three or four years ago, uh, the legislature actually – authorized, uh, called for the creation of a grants portal. So it's a single website, grants.ca.gov, where people can go and get access to all of the grants statewide. Um, wow, that's that's actually a great service. So it's, yeah, it's one of yeah. those, it's like, hey, folks, this is... You I know, know a lot of if you're looking for stuff, and, yeah, that would... It's so want, want to know about it's, it's, not, it's not stuff that we've done before. It's yeah. not super close, but yeah. as, as a, a state agency that manages information, mm-hmm. it, it seemed like a good fit. And so no, that's, that's great. You guys also do, remind me, correct me if I'm wrong, but... Uh, like you can do research for absolutely you know a uh, well anyone really in California yeah. a resident of California I know that our office has has used the the library research portal yep. to look into legislative or policy issues absolutely things like that too. we've got a number of reading rooms so we've got yeah. California history or yeah it's the California history room and the California history room uh, you'll you stop in there you'll see authors documentary filmmakers uh, it's a great place to go for yeah. information about California history uh, and then we've got a, a research bureau the California research bureau That's that's what it is, yeah. And they are um, a team of researchers and reference librarians who their their sole job is to answer questions for the the governor and the legislature. Yeah. Um, people tell – I know you'll be shocked, shocked to hear this, but people give information to legislators that is not always correct. Um, <laughs> it, it, it's it, – and I, th- I think, you know, I, as, as you say, correct me if I'm wrong, you end up starting to – kind of question the information you're given. Like yeah. people are giving you information for a reason. Right. And you have to know it's it's not always correct. It may be slanted. It may right, be right. There, there may be an angle to it. For sure. And so one of the services they provide is if you have a question about information that you've been given, wow. they can find the, the, the cool. scientific journal or whatever it is that that either supports that or not so that you or your staff can read that. It's it's a really valuable service that hopefully makes public policy better in yeah, California. Yeah, for sure. I feel like it's kind of an uh, – an under or like not a ton of people even in the capital know about it, which I, I've always kind of shared that with some yeah. of my my colleagues there about like you know well there's always the there's always the research bureau yeah and and you know it's a resource that you can you can have it's sure. I and and there's both the research element when I was a staffer uh, <clears throat> in the building um, I used to they they had a, a branch in in the annex um, and. W- branch isn't there anymore, but neither is the yeah, NX. Yeah, yeah. And um, I used to go in there and be like, hey, I recommend a book for me. Yeah. And so just kind of, they'd be like, what are you, into, what, like, what topics are you interested in? And they'd, they'd pull a generally public policy or California history related book. And they'd be like, come back in two days and we'll have it for you here. And you could just pick up a book and That's like pretty book cool. recommendations are yeah. great. That's such a. They've I, now torn that building down. They've now, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, it's, it's not there. The I Capitol walked past Annex. it this morning. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, you know, but I think I think just the the resources you guys provide is awesome. I it was fun. I know you, I I came over recently. Yeah, that was and great. we walked through, and I was I was blown away by the just the volume of stuff. It's a lot that you have. I mean, you literally have records from every legislative year. Yep. You have, you know, I mean, how many books did you say? It was? Um, four million. Was yeah, it? yeah. I mean, all part, so all part. like what. Do you guys ever run out of space? I mean, it just seems uh, that's, like that's, that's the thing. Yeah. So, so there is always um, a need to make sure that you're using your space efficiently. Um, I, I think there is likely going to be a need in the next few years mm. uh, for some sort of other uh, storage. But um, yeah, there, there's always a 
there's just constant reevaluation of the yeah. items in our collection. Yeah. And so we we do we have gotten rid of a few books recently. Um, and sometimes people are scandalizing. No, 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 no. These are these are books that like <laughs> we we make sure it's not stuff that's going to be checked out again. Right. right, uh, right. One example was we have books that I, I assume were really useful back in the day, and they have. <laughs> Every stock's price at the end of the closing, you know, the closing bell, oh, yeah, yeah. going all the way back. Wow. And that's all online. That's easy access right, right, online right, now. Yeah. Like, hey, what was the price of this company on this day? It's like, no, easy, easy <laughs> we, to look up. You do not need the yeah. books. The books have not been checked out in 20 years. They're unlikely to ever be checked out again. That's a safe wow, thing to yeah, dispose yeah. of. Yeah. Very, very um, interesting. But it's, yeah, yeah it's it always, always a reevaluation. What, what's important? What do yeah. people need to know Absolutely. in order to do their jobs? No, that's really cool. So in addition to the library, I mean, obviously, one of the things that interested you about working at the library yeah. is you, that you are kind of yourself a historian. I am. Uh, it's a bad habit. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Right. So what, what is, what, what's your official historian title? I don't, uh, I, I don't have an official historian <laughs> title. Have um, you self-titled uh, no, yourself? Uh, they, they, uh, so um, uh, a few years ago, uh, legis- I think it was, it was yeah. uh, about the time I got to the library, one of the legislators introduced a resolution to name me the official legislative historian. And uh, Senate, so Senate, cool. Senate rules did not like that. They did uh, not like they, it. They did not like that. And so, uh, so that, that, that did not pass. Um, <laughs> but, um, but people start That's calling hilarious. me that anyway. What was their objection? Was um, it just like a the, the, who's Alex? I don't know who Alex. <laughs> Alex is some random guy. That's uh, a fair point. And so it was like, so they were like, we we, we haven't like. <laughs> I think the legislature last, it was actually the assembly uh, designated somebody as an official legislative historian back in the 60s. Um, Interesting. Right? Maybe, yeah, right yeah. around there. Don Allen, Don A. Allen, who's a former yeah. assemblyman, yeah. Yeah. Uh, great sense of humor. And um, and he held that title, legislative historian, until he died in the 80s. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. But, that, that's actually a fun story. Uh, but, but I mean, like, you know, you obviously uh, love history. Absolutely. Per, in particular, California history. Sure. Um, what 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 is interesting to you about it? Kind of what keeps you coming back to the historical stuff in um, California's history? So, in, in in particular, my my favorite thing to study is the history of the state legislature, uh, because it, at least in theory, uh, the the legislature is composed of representatives from around the state, and so you can really understand the state and what its priorities, what its values are, by studying the legislature, and which puts a lot of pressure on on yeah, you. Yeah. And the farther back you go, uh, you start realizing. That there are very few normal people that serve in the legislature. Uh, with no offense to anyone, of course. Um, and, but it's it's there. There's something about the legislature that that attracts very interesting people. Yeah. Um, maybe I shouldn't say no no normal. I say no hey, no know, boring people. My there wife are, might agree with that. Too, there are no know. boring people. Uh, very rarely are there boring people in the legislature. And so, uh, just hearing their stories sometimes. And and yeah. we've talked about this. You know. Sometimes people keep journals, and journals yeah. from legislators are fascinating. Yeah. They're, they're some amazing stuff. Um, and just some of the story, oral history interviews yeah. where people tell what happened during their time in the legislature, it's fascinating. Are journals still valuable? I, so one of the first pieces of advice is you gave me when I got elected was keep a journal, which I will say I have – kind of done but not very well like you know early on it's easier it's easier and you get yeah. busy and all that stuff but i mean is there value in that given the internet age and given like the like what's the value there um the best answer okay best answer is <laughs> is is there stuff that the public doesn't get to see yeah. about the legislature and That's it's like fair. oh absolutely uh yeah. One of, one of my favorites I, I heard uh, from a uh, Senate or Assembly Republican Caucus staffer uh, w- from the '90s uh, was they, they were having a caucus meeting one time. You know, there's generally it's just the members, yeah. and then like one or two staff from from the leader's office. And they're in the building. You know, they're in this this hearing room uh, right off the assembly floor, and a phone call comes in, and somebody answers the phone, and you know, <laughs> says, "Oh, you guys, you guys got to got to listen to this." And they said, nope, nope, because caucus meetings can get out of hand. And so they have a thing where you raise your hand and they, they call on people in order. <laughs> yes, we still do that. And they still do that. And this guy said, no, 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 this is really important. They said, nope, it's got to wait. We got, we have to follow you. You have to raise your hand and we'll go in order. Yeah. And so it took like 20 minutes to get to this. This is a real story. It took 20 minutes to get to this guy. And they're like, oh, okay. Some of them, like, what was, what was your, the, what was the phone call? And he said, oh, it was the sergeants. Uh, there's a bomb threat against the Capitol and we need to evacuate. <laughs> and they were like, they were like, wow, why, why did you? And he said, well, you told me I had to raise my hand and wait, <laughs> wait, wait in line. And, and it's just like those stories, like that, I mean, those yeah, stories that would not get out. Read yeah. in the... and, and it's just like things like that where it's, yeah. you know, the, the, who the personalities were. Cause you, you yeah. have the names, but it's like, like, you know, yeah. and, and not that you would want it out there now, but it's like, you have, 
a best friend sure. or a sure. two or three person cohort that's like your your people right. in the legislature. And and there are probably members mm-hmm. of the caucus that you don't like. I mean, probably not. But <laughs> oh, of course, well, not. of course not. They're all everybody's friends. But but it's like <laughs> but it's it's the different personalities, different yeah. folks looking for. They want different things yeah. out of it, and um, preserving that. Not not for now, but for that's a good point. Yeah. Fifty years from now, it really helps yeah. people understand. Oh, that's why this person went to Congress for yeah. half a term. Uh, right. A few years later, it, it really it really fills it in. Yeah. No, that's that's really interesting, and uh, I think some people would find that interesting. Obviously, some people might so not. not. Yeah. No, it's it's all, and it's it's just like. <laughs> but I think writing. It's, yeah, it's really fascinating. I mean, it, it the the personalities part is what you don't really see in the media and in the kind of public story, yeah. right, that's written. So um, there, there, there was another story that was um, from the 1850s, and it was uh, it was such a crazy story that you think, you know, is, is this a credible yeah. thing? And it's like, no, no, the, 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 this assembly member later became, he's the second longest serving U.S. Supreme Court justice ever. Wow. Uh, served okay. in the California State yeah. Assembly back in the 1850s. And he had an autobiography that he wrote. And one of the things he wrote about was, you know, the first, the Bruner's desks that, you know, the, okay. the assembly has used the same desks yeah. forever and ever and ever. And they initially came without locks. And he talked about why locks were installed on the assembly member desks. And it was because um, they they had an appeal. People would wear sidearms uh, to session. Yeah. And so the request was, look, we will give you locks on your desks. Please put your sidearms in your desk so that it's not out uh, during session. And you look at it today, and it's like, no. The, I, like every time I see one of those desks on the assembly floor, right. I always think, I know why that lock is there. It's not there for that reason anymore. <laughs> but it's like, no, the the original reason for yeah, those exactly. locks. Yeah, yeah, was, not not too many sidearms. On not the floor too many sidearms the on the floor. Anymore. Yeah, but it's it's a wild like it's it's that history where it's just <laughs> yeah, it, it provides context. That is to, really fascinating. Uh, what, yeah. what would you see? Yeah. What are some of your other favorite stories like that you've come across over your years uh, um, studying the the history of California? Well, I think uh, every time. So you know where we are here. Uh, today, uh, Senator Hotel. Yeah. Um, this was the site of one of the biggest scandals of the 1940s. Hmm. Um, this was, it, it's an office building today, but uh, back in the 1940s, this was a hotel, hotel yeah. uh, where, where particularly legislators would often live during session while they were here before returning to the district. And there was a, uh, uh, a governor who had a strong disagreement with the assembly speaker. And the assembly speaker was staying here in, in the hotel center. And the governor actually ordered the speaker's uh, telephone to be wiretapped. Uh, wow. And so every time I see this building, I was saying, yeah, no, there's, <laughs> there's – in this building, it was it was massive. I mean because they found it. They found the wire. There were – you know, telephones are supposed to have one wire coming out of yeah. it. And the speaker noticed that there were two wires coming out of his phone. And so he traced it to the room next door and there was a DMV employee – uh, with a with a recording device and a, a headphones, listening to his conversation uh, that he had just gotten, he had just gotten off the phone with his wife, and it blew up huge. I mean, wow. like wiretapping, that it just it's Why so a crazy. DMV employee? That's the funny part uh, to me. <laughs> the the governor at that time had appointed a special investigator, like okay. like a private eye yeah, yeah. kind of kind of person to run the DMV because yeah. he wanted that to be his like just finding a job for somebody. And yeah. so uh, so DMV was. Doing a lot of interesting stuff. What was really interesting was after uh, it, it all blew up, the, the governor was not reelected. Earl Warren became governor after that. Yeah. Um, and the assembly speaker ended up leaving office, okay. and he was appointed DMV director <laughs> after he left office. And it was and it was always one of those like that's it's fitting. It's fitting. It was it was a Democratic nice. assembly speaker. Yeah. Uh, wiretapped by a Democratic governor. Yeah. And he was appointed DMV director by a Republican governor. Who wow. just they the common you know that's that's incredible we know the same yeah. people that that is a pretty crazy one. it's a crazy story yeah there there's so many <clears throat> so many stories out there um and and they're still being written I'm sure a lot of scandals over the years uh, right every so. every possible thing <laughs> um, well I remember when I was an intern in um, in the Capitol <clears throat> many years ago not that many I guess but it was feels like a many, many years ago um, that was the year that. The FBI came into the Capitol like three times, ra- yeah. raided the Capitol multiple yep. times for uh, various scandals various in scandals. a single year. Yep. Right? There was uh, Leland E and um, uh, uh, now I'm blanking on all uh, of them, Calderon, and, oh, Calderon and, and, and Rod Wright. And, and Rod Wright, Rod which Wright was, was residency, so that <clears> which wasn't. was a residency issue. But the the other two what, it was bribery and arms oh, trafficking. Bribery and, and tr- arms trafficking. I mean, just it, it crazy was weird. stuff. It was that, weird. 
you know, uh, as an intern, I, I was just like, what have I done? You know, like where, where Wait, am, what I am I what are these, working? Yeah. I mean, this is crazy. Yeah. You've got federal agents running out with computers and it was, um, it was a I, wild time. Every time, every time reporters call. And they're like, "This is the is this the craziest thing that has ever happened in the history of the legislature?" And I, no, I assure you, it is not. You don't even have to tell me what it is. I can promise you that something crazier has happened. It's 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 forty five hundred yeah. interesting people over a one hundred and seventy five year period. It's like no, they've done yeah. every imaginable, like really, really every imaginable thing that you can imagine. Yeah, has been done. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Every flavor, every variety. That's, um, that's so incredible. So you actually tell me a little bit about this because you actually uh, love the history of the legislature so much. You wrote a book. I did. Uh, it's called California Lawmaker: The Men and Women of the California State Legislature, and and you published this kind of an updated edition of this yeah. every four years. Every four years, yeah. So coming so, up. But uh, tell me about the book. Like what inspired you to write it? And by the way, you can get it on Amazon yeah, if yeah, anyone wants yeah. to get um, it. It was, it was, a, uh, it, it was a project. I, I started getting questions from <clears throat> reporters. Yeah. Uh, it was prior to me arriving at the legislature. Uh, or sorry, prior to me arriving at the library. Uh, I was at the after I was sure, at the legislature, yeah. and um, I would get questions. I'd say, who's the youngest legislator ever? Uh, who's the oldest legislator ever? Who's... Yeah. What's the shortest that anybody's ever served? And and so I I would get these questions and I would think, hey, what's the most votes that anybody ever ever received in a single election? And <laughs> that's so random. And man. and so it would be all these questions and I thought, you know, I, I so I started a document where I would just keep track of the answers yeah. to like the most frequently asked questions. <clears throat> and then I realized, you know, you could there's there's a lot of context. You can, you know, you can say, well, the most votes ever received by a candidate was this person in this year, but there's a there's a fuller story. Uh, sure. here yeah. that, that is not going to be apparent otherwise. Mm -hmm. And so um, just thought about expanding it into a larger form. And so that's that's what I did was that's I cool. kind of just, it, you know, I always say it's, it's not, it's probably not going to be everybody's number one go-to, but I think within the capital community, yeah. it's, it's a really good it's resource. It's kind of a fun little, yeah. yeah. No, it, it, it's it's a fun, but I, I can't remember which edition I have, but I have one on my shelf at the, at the office and uh, definitely a lot of really interesting stuff in there. And and actually, you know, when election season comes around, I know it gets it gets really interesting because you know we've got these crazy close races and similar questions are asked. Yep. Right? Is this the closest race ever? That was, and we had that in in uh, in in well last year. Like this I, last I mean, cycle, yeah, 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 I, 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 I don't know if you're paying attention. Yeah, no, you're of course paying attention. <laughs> but we we had more close contests yeah. than we have had in any election uh, at least in twenty years, uh, yeah, and likely amazing. even farther yeah. back. Um, you know, you can you can evaluate how close an election is either by the number of votes separating the two candidates or by the percentage of the vote. Correct. Um, yeah. And so, so there were actually uh, there were I think there were three contests that were extraordinarily close. Yeah. Uh, in 2020, and uh, Melissa Hurtado. That was going to uh, say the number one being Melissa Hurtado and and Greg and, and, and Greg Wallace David Shepard. I think and David yeah. was. Uh, uh, what would the end like? Twenty two votes. It was or so small. I think. I think. Well, it was. I think it was actually. It was more than that. But as a percentage, it was a narrow. So percentage wise, as a as a proportion of the total yeah. vote, it was the the narrowest divide in in. I think it was one in the last century, or maybe slightly That's more than a century. Amazing. Uh, it was ridiculously slim, and yeah. then. But if you count by the number of votes, the districts are so much larger now. Yeah, and those so, are huge. And, and so, so it makes it even crazier. And so you right? go like, yeah. oh, like if you have, and I think the example from 100 years ago was, oh, we have a you know state senate campaign, and 30,000 votes were cast, and they <laughs> right. were in the district. Two votes apart. And it's like, well, now you have, oh, there were 200,000 200, votes, votes cast, yeah. and they were yeah. you know, some other slim amount. And it's like, you know, proportionally, it's like it seems bigger because it's more votes, but – as a proportion, it's that's nothing. Yeah, um, it's it's really small, yeah. and so uh, yeah. So we actually had that was uh, after the last election uh, was the first time ever in, yeah. in the history of the legislature that we've had members sworn in late. Uh, the tradition was always you swear in whoever's ahead, and then when the final vote comes out, you you mm. switch it if you need to. Yeah. Um, and that happened most recently in 1980, 81. <clears throat> uh, Adrian Fonzi from uh, uh, Stockton. Uh, okay. And and he got sworn in, and then the final vote count came out, and he was not in, and so he left wow. office after about thirty. I think it was thirty four. He, he was he was in for thirty four days, and he lost by thirty four votes. It was some something. It was it was it was just <laughs> this amazing thing, and 
Uh, he was our last legislator to serve and never have a bill signed into law. So, so does he? Wow, that's actually a fun stat. Too. Yeah, that was. D- does he count as a legislator, yeah. even though he didn't oh, win the election? Did you take the oath of office? So, so you get to. So you. You could be a legislator and actually not win your election. You could be a legislator, even though even though it was for a very short period. We, we, we've of time. had about a dozen. Uh, there, wow. there was there was one back in the back in the day where uh, northern part of the state, there was disagreement about where California's border was. Uh, you know, is it at the river huh. or is it a flat line like the top of wow. California? Is it flat yeah. or is it or does it follow some river? And and so there were votes that were cast on the other side of the river wow. that put made made one person like they, they they came down they were sworn in they started they introduced bills assigned to committees yeah. and then they're like no you know what uh, that actually is not in California that's Oregon <laughs> um, and they oh and so they withdrew those votes and the other candidate won and wow. that was that was that and um, yeah they get to be on the list uh, but yeah they're in your they, they served I would yeah assume, so. So do you have every legislator of all time uh, listed in there somewhere? Uh, or is it just no, it's so in in the uh, it's really hard. Eighteen sixties, eighteen seventies. There were there were a ton. Um, there oh, there okay. were more. I think it was there were more legislators in the first twenty years that we were a state than there have been since like the twenties. So you go like wow. first twenty years, eighteen yeah. sixties or eighteen fifties, eighteen sixties was as many candidates, many candidates, as many elected officials, state legislators as we have had like nineteen maybe at this point nineteen thirty to present. Okay. It was a ton, and mostly we don't know very much about them, and so it's hard to yeah, it's hard to kind of tell those stories. And some sometimes they just they I I it's not the professional term, but it's they just evaporate. They they serve. They would serve for one session. Most yeah. folks serve for one session. At that point, the assembly was a one year term. Oh wow! Um, the Senate was two years. The <clears throat> governor was two years, and they would come in, they'd serve, and they'd be ah, oh, this is not for me. Uh, yeah. I'm going to go back to ranching or farming or gold panning or whatever. I just not this. And they would leave and they'd yeah. be gone. And, and it's like, what, what, who yeah. was that? All we know is their last name and their middle and or first and middle uh, initials. It's really hard to track these folks down. Well, I, I uh, sympathize with that sentiment sometimes, you know, some days. It's, it's a big group. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, but I think, I'm, you know, that's one of those things I think, you know, as, as your constituents are, are you know, hopefully listening to this, yeah. I, I would encourage them like, come down, meet, Meet Josh. Uh, come down to the swing space. Come observe yeah. a session. Uh, yeah. See how your government works. It's yeah. um, it's a really unique opportunity we have. We we live in a democracy. Uh, that's uh, for for all the criticism. It's it's doing great, and it's it's open. It's transparent. You can you can attend these things and see your government. It's really cool. Yeah, it is really. Uh it's and and you know we try to encourage that. I think you actually came and joined me when I hosted a group of students. I on did the, the assembly floor, and we got to talk about the history of the legislature and kind of obviously in in fourth grade terms. Yeah, <clears throat> right. Like what we do, and it's it's really good. I think it's a really important part of, um, you know, just you know, learning like that civics education. It's an important part of being an informed citizen, and an important part of being you know. Uh, obviously, an informed voter. Absolutely. Um, and so, I, I just think, yeah, it's it's really an opportunity that I I encourage. I know some of the field trips have gone away, and I know COVID kind of harmed some things, but they're starting to come back. But I just I, I think it's a great experience as a as a young. It student. is. I, I think I think it, it it opens their eyes, but it's also <clears throat> I mean, particularly for your district. Yeah, they're right here. Yeah. It's it's yeah. not far away. Uh, the Capitol's open on weekends. Yep. Uh, at least it was yeah. last time I checked. And yep. and you can you can stop by. You can drive. Uh, come on down and and see it. See the building, and and just kind of understand like this is a place where history has happened. Um, Absolutely, a lot of really interesting things have happened here. And uh, yeah, it's it, it's cool. also funny too. You know, like because we have a pretty extensive internship program in my office. So right. you know we have. Uh, high school students that intern in our district office, right? But then we also have college students that intern in our uh, capital office, learn about the policy process. Um, and I always encourage people to check those out because, uh, you know, I have some obviously interns that love it. They absolutely think, oh, this is what I want to do. But then you also have interns that are decide, this is the last thing I want to do. I never want to be back here. And that's important to learn too. Absolutely. <laughs> it's no, like, it's, it's. Um, I, I think, uh, you know, that's, there are a lot of jobs uh, yeah. in and and uh, in in my career. I, you know, I, I had several yeah. jobs before I started doing this and door to door sales. Um, yeah. I hated it. <laughs> I absolutely hated uh, it. I, I did some telemarketing <clears throat> yeah. for a minute that uh, would and, not I would never do again. And, and it's one of those things where it's like, but you picked up skills. It's, yeah, there there exactly. there are things, and so even even if you're you know you're in high school, you're thinking about an internship yep. at the Capitol. 
it may not be what you love, but yeah. you can likely learn skills that will yeah. apply for the rest of your life. Yeah, um, absolutely. It's funny. One of the one of the skills you learn pretty quickly. I don't know if you came across this is how to write succinctly. I don't know. If, they do uh, not teach that in college. <laughs> they do not teach this in college. Uh, and I'll talk to my wife or other, co- you know, college students or whatever about it. And it's like you're writing these giant essays right. and then you get here and it's like you they got want three sentences. Yeah, exactly. That's it. They want you to condense everything down to it, that, that a was couple sentences. Such a hard transition when, you know, you college and then, and then you come here and it's like, no, we yeah. want we want bullet points like they yeah. don't even have to be real sentences. <laughs> um, it's just bullet points. And it's like, oh, yeah. oh, that's that's completely different because. Yeah. Because you don't actually want to read, uh, you don't want to be reading lines off something. You just want bullet points that you can, you be, you know, you can trigger memories, and you can. Yeah. Oh, let me talk about this. What's next? Oh, okay, talk well, about this. Yeah. And, and the media is not reading an essay, right? If you send out a press release that's eight pages long, you know, nobody's going to read it. Right? Yeah. No, it's, it's hard. <laughs> I, I can tell you know, working at the library, it's. Um, we send out press releases, and it's it's um it's 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 really it's a challenge because yeah, I think in today's. Uh, media market, yeah. um, there, there's very little market for good news from libraries. Yeah. And so it's like, hey, we got a program. We, you know, we taught 10,000 people to read, you know, yeah. and, and so. it's like, oh, that's great. Thanks. <laughs> that's good. It's like, no, it's, it's, it's actually great. It's, it's a really good thing it that's is, happening. Yeah. No, that's awesome. It's, uh, yeah, every now and then you'll post, uh, you know, a tweet or, by the way, you can, uh, what's your Twitter? Uh, on, on Twitter or X, X, X Twitter. Um, so uh, I am Alex, uh, A-L-E-X-C, uh, from uh-huh. middle initial, and then Vassar, V-A-S-S-A-R. Yeah, that's right. So Alex C. Vassar on Twitter or X, uh, but but you're it's a fun follow because you, you put out some fun stuff. It's, yeah, there, there's uh, you know some some legislative documents, yeah. some some history kind of today in the life of whatever. And so, uh, some of the, my favorite stuff that you post though, it's like stuff like some letter that a legislator wrote to another member, like yeah. back in I don't know the 1900s. Yeah, yeah. About you know and and just like well, number one, the language that they use in terms of like how like the English is yes. like a different language. Absolutely. And, and like, that it's on letterhead. <laughs> that it's it's a it's a you know before text messages yeah. or emails typewriter it was probably typewriter and yeah, and, yeah. and what you had a lot of times was people would save the carbon you know like we have the oh cc yeah. oh, you're gonna cc Josh Hoover on an email and and it's um they would do literally they would do a carbon copy of the outgoing letter and save yeah. it in their sent folders yeah um like that's. That's Friends, awesome. that's where the email folders come from. <laughs> and it's like you would keep your sense so that you could compare when you got the letter back. You'd say, what did I say? Oh, oh. And you could have that to compare back and forth. Yeah. And um, so bad. But most people didn't save them. There there was one legislator who did. Yeah. Uh, he saved every single piece of correspondence from his 24 years in the legislature <laughs> and buried them underground right before he died. Jeez. And they were underground for 50 years. And when they came up, they said... Alex, we'd like you to have these. Would would you please wow. take these? And so um, I didn't know the underground story. That's crazy. It was it was a refrigerated rail car uh, <laughs> buried in the desert. Uh, well, not the desert. It was a dry area. Um, That's crazy. But yeah, great. Uh, one of one of the best insights that we have. How, to, how did they uncover this? Like what? Uh, it was it was in the family. Like oh, his, okay. his so widow like still the, lived there for another thirty forty years. So and like a time capsule. It was time sort of absolutely a time yeah. capsule. And and um, it, wow. was, it was it was buried in the hillside. And and so. It stayed there, you know. They it was right by the house. They were able to keep an eye on it, and um, eventually, hmm. they they took all the materials out, tried to figure out who who would want this, who would want all these letters, and and they That's actually like Christmas for you, yeah. yeah and they, yeah, and they, they said, look, it, either it will either you know give it to yeah. you or we'll have it destroyed. Um, <laughs> we, yeah. We're not interested in giving it to other folks. Yeah. Uh, do you want it or not? And I said, yeah, I can. I think I think I can understand the past better, and I can yeah. help other people understand the past better. And that's pretty similarities cool. to the present because every once in a while there's something that's like, hey, we're still dealing with this issue. You know, uh, homelessness was yeah. a major issue in uh, post World War II. Wow. Uh, 1946, wow. service members were returning and they didn't want to go anywhere else. They wanted to stay in California. And there was this epic housing shortage. And wow. and and so it's it's one of those, you know, they, they've they actually solved the problem before. Uh, you know, whether you look at uh, San Francisco after the 1906 earthquake, where it was tiny homes, they, they built. Wow. Thousands of tiny homes, or after World War II, where they came up with other housing options. It was um, housing's a, a persistent issue, and yeah. they have solved it before. So I'm confident it'll happen again. But um, 
Yeah, I'm always like, look. That, that's pretty incredible, though. You don't get in trouble for copy and pasting I, I think it's, in the past. I think it's certainly underappreciated, though. Um, you know, the, and this is probably why one of the reasons you do what you do, but the the history gets forgotten, and then we kind of repeat the same mistakes, and, and it's just kind of underappreciated that the people before us actually had some ideas on this stuff. They did, and some of them worked well. Yeah. And I think that's I think that's the real benefit is yeah. they 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 had problems. They came up with solutions. Some of the solutions worked really, really well. And some of them worked horribly. <laughs> and some of the solutions that worked really well in the past yeah. wouldn't work today. Right. Uh, but some right. of the things that worked out really poorly before might actually work better now in, in the modern era. And so it's – um, yeah. Yeah, a lot of answers in the past. That's awesome. Well, check out uh, the book California Lawmaker on Amazon if you're interested in learning more about that. I mean, I think it's a really fun uh, thing to have on your bookshelf. Oh, thank you, know? you. And um, uh, yeah, how long does that take you? What do you add to it when you make the new edition? Um, generally, just... I rewrite a little bit. There's there's okay. kind of like I have a, a chapter or two about the life of the Capitol. Uh, and you kind of update it and it. just kind of update it. And say what you know. What are folks? What 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 are folks oh, talking nice. about yeah. uh, right now? You know, um, elevators in the swing space uh, oh, are, are a hot topic, and you know, just kind of trying to let folks give that insight either for yeah. folks now coming into the building or folks looking back from yeah. 20 or 30 years from now. Like what were people thinking about or talking about in the Capitol at that time? Yeah. What's going on at the Capitol now too, just from a re you know, obviously they're rebuilding half the Capitol, yeah. the Capitol annex project, which I, you know, we we've talked a little bit about on this and I've, I've shared some of my frustrations with that, but they've, they've actually demolished half of the Capitol yeah. at this point, the annex, the back half of the Capitol uh, which in is a really big deal. I, I mean, yeah. it's just like yeah. any you know the restoration uh, was that in the seventies seventies eighties was yeah. a huge, um, obviously part of the history of California. And then I think they built the annex at some point in the was it the fifties? It was fifties, yeah, forty nine to uh, add office space yep. to the you know to the Capitol. Because prior to that, um, and, and yeah. it's that same thing where it's time time progresses. Yeah. Prior to that, generally members' offices in Sacramento yeah. were at their desks. Uh, so, you, so you would have like your yeah your your copy of bills, your copy of you know everything that you had. Yeah. Your mail would be delivered to your desk in the assembly chambers, and you would be expected to work there. And people didn't like that; they needed a little bit more <laughs> space. Like, and well, and I'm so around all these people. And so it was. I mean, it, it was, was like still, it was like the original co working space. Oh yeah, it was totally. And and they, <laughs> I was actually talking to someone about this recently. It's like you know you would have there was one staffer yeah for every two members yeah and. It it got tense because the, the that's that staffer's time was like yeah. rules committee would hire them and say you guys figure out how their time is going to yeah. be divided and so you'd have two members just going head like to head and, no I it. need <laughs> I need this person to write letters for me and yeah it was it was it was a weird time it's pretty interesting to look at the old photos too where obviously everything's gone most everything's gone digital now. Yeah. But you had just the stacks and stacks of bills and papers and like a mile. High. I mean, it was like it was how crazy. did they even navigate that? But you know, that was that was the uh, that was how it worked. And you actually taught me uh, a few weeks ago because I'd never even asked this question. Uh -oh. I'm not even curious sure. enough. But on our desk, we've got three buttons. We have a green button and a red button, which are the only two that I use, yeah. right? Which is yes or no on a vote. And then you've got this yellow button, the page button. Page button, yeah. That you hit to call a staffer, right? Yeah, or and, and that like was that. Uh, so so back just... in, yeah, back until uh, until the 1960s. Uh, we, we had a program where yeah. uh, high school students from around the state, and it was each member could le – could each legislator could uh, nominate somebody. A lot of times they picked their kids, uh, would come up to Sacramento for the session, yeah. and they would run notes. Uh, so <laughs> just, you know, from here over there and they were, they were just running papers between the members because the members have to stay at their desks because that's where you vote from. Right. And you don't get up and walk around during session. <laughs> and, and now it's like, oh no, we don't, we don't do that anymore. Yeah, we but don't yeah. do that anymore. Um, but the third button is still there, the page button. And it'd be um, fun to bring that back. You know, it was, it was a really it, good that, program. That sounds like a fun job. I think, um, <laughs> we actually, um, uh, Supreme Court Justice Kennedy. Yeah. Uh, was a I believe it was a Senate page uh, oh, wow. shortly before the okay. program ended. Jim Nielsen was was a was a Senate and Assembly page. Um, it's some interesting folks. It was it was a really good introduction to yeah. the legislative process. That's pretty fascinating. Yeah. Well, uh, thanks so much for being on today. Absolutely. I mean, I don't know if you Thank have you. any final thoughts for the podcast. 
uh, but, uh, you know, or any final uh, no, stories think, or anything like that? I, I, th I think, you know, this one of the things, you know, for, for your district in particular, uh, we live in Sacramento, and yep. Sacramento is just, it has such a rich history. Yeah. Uh, there, there are local authors uh, like uh, Bill Berg. Who um, who write about it and and there's just it's it's such an amazing place. So I would encourage you if you don't already uh, learn about the history of your local neighborhood uh, yeah. and and this region and the state because uh, it it is fascinating. Yeah, I, mean, I totally agree. And um, you know maybe we'll have you back on at some point cool. to We'd talk to. about uh, if if there's like a story that comes out that has some historical Always. background. Always. I think it'd be fun to have you back on. Um, but I really appreciate you coming. We're going to do a few more podcasts like this where we just kind of interview some interesting people. We're trying to have, uh, uh, one on the California state budget and, 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 and the, um, uh, public policy Institute of California. We're going to be talking about what they do in California. Cool. So, uh, definitely, uh, excited for those. Uh, if you have ideas for future podcasts, you can email point of order pod at gmail.com. Uh, you can also follow the podcast on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, I guess threads, although threads, uh, I don't know. It's just Perhaps. hasn't really uh, done it for me. Um, and then you can also follow us on Twitter or X, uh, myself at Joshua underscore Hoover. Uh, Alex mentioned at Alex C. Vassar yep. um, uh, on X. Uh, thanks, Alex. Yep. Appreciate it. Thank you.